lived in Florida since 1989. Yeah. Never, never have I experienced yeah. damage or the amount of tornadoes that came to this area. Yeah. And it was the most frightening thing I've ever lived through. The stories are coming out and they will last a lifetime. Tonight, the reality of Hurricane Milton's trek across Florida gets etched into our memories. From submerged streets to countless water rescues, so many can only say they have never seen anything like this. And this is all new video just into our newsroom in the last few minutes. These aerials from Palm Beach County on the opposite side of Florida from where Milton came ashore. As you can see, the storm is so wide, the damage really spread out. Some roofs ripped away while others only missing shingles and some not damaged at all. Tonight, thousands of people are without power and rescue missions continue searching for people stuck after the Category 3 storm. And this includes video from a Florida Police Department helping save a 14-year-old. Take a look. That video is one of several moments just like it crews still continuing to go out into flooded communities looking for people. Tonight we have Team 4 coverage of those efforts, including new information from the president about the ways the government is working to step in. But we're going to start tonight with our Nathan Vickers catching up with several local crews helping those in need. Nathan. Well, uh, Corey, uh, we've just learned, too, that the, the Missouri, sorry, Missouri Governor Mike Parson has started pulling back some of the resources that the state has been sending to Florida, saying that they're no longer needed. But here at the Red Cross and at other local agencies, it's been all hands on deck preparing to help people through a second round of devastating storms. As a second storm passes over the southeastern U.S. This isn't the first hurricane many of these people have experienced. Nick O'Hanlon is preparing to mobilize with Red Cross volunteers in communities already hurting from Hurricane Helene. We're really putting a strong emphasis on being present and we're having a listening ear with uh, those impacted individuals. The Red Cross says its stockpile of supplies should be enough to bring water, food, and first aid to those communities. We all work together. We all pitch in. We're able to mobilize. The organization's biggest challenge will be finding shelter space for those displaced. Ensuring that people not only had a safe place to ride out the storm last night, but those who don't have a place to go back to are able to have a place that they can stay. Local crews from Ameren are back in St. Louis after assisting with Hurricane Helene. Now the utility provider is preparing to send fresh workers if needed to help with the Milton response. We're going to be dealing with a lot of debris, a lot of flooding, and it's, it's going to be hot and steamy. So we want, we want new volunteers. Missouri Task Force 1, which includes roughly a dozen local first responders, may extend their time in disaster zones conducting water rescues and meeting other needs. We'll stay there as long as FEMA holds us in, in, in theater. So once North Carolina releases us back to FEMA, then if they need us, they'll put us in play. It's work that takes people willing to rise to the challenge for a second time. The destruction might not have been as, as bad as what we anticipated, but for that person's home in these communities, this is the worst day of their life. Well, the Red Cross says they have plenty of supplies to send down south. They say they are still looking for volunteers for this and some of their other missions. They say that while they're responding to Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton, they're also looking for more blood donations so they can continue to send those supplies to the southeast. Reporting live, Nathan Vickers, First Alert 4. A lot of need, Nathan. Thank you. Tonight we continue.